Welcome to Cute Fast Track Series for API 570 Piping Inspection Code in Service Inspection, Rating, Repair, and Alteration of Piping Systems. In this lecture, we will continue discuss Clauses 5 and we highlight important information contained item sub-clauses 5.5 general types of inspection and surveillance. Types of inspection and surveillance Different types of inspection and surveillance are appropriate depending on the circumstances and the piping system. These include the following. Internal visual inspection. On-stream inspection. Thickness measurement inspection. Various NDE examinations. External visual inspection. Vibrating piping inspection. Supplemental inspection. Internal visual inspections. Internal visual inspections are not normally performed on piping. When practical. Internal visual inspections may be scheduled for systems, such as large diameter transfer lines, ducts, catalyst lines, or other large diameter piping systems. Such inspections are similar in nature to pressure vessel inspections, and should be conducted with methods and procedures similar to those outlined in API 510 and API 572. Remote visual inspection techniques can be helpful when inspecting piping which is too small to enter. On stream inspection. The on stream inspection may be required by the inspection plan. All on stream inspections should be conducted by either an inspector or examiner. When on stream inspections of the pressure boundary are specified, they shall be designed to detect the damage mechanisms identified in the inspection plan. The inspection may include several NDE techniques to check for various types of damage that pertain to the circuit as identified during inspection planning. Techniques used in on-stream inspections are chosen for their ability to identify particular damage mechanisms from the exterior, and their capabilities to perform at the on-stream conditions of the piping system for example metal temperatures. Thickness measurement inspection Thickness measurements are obtained to verify the thickness of piping components. This data is used to calculate the corrosion rates and remaining life of the piping system. Thickness measurements shall be obtained by the inspector or the examiner at the direction of the inspector. The owner user shall ensure that all individuals conducting thickness measurements are trained and qualified in accordance with the applicable procedure used during the examination. The inspector should consult with a corrosion specialist when the short-term corrosion rate changes significantly from the previous identified rate to determine the cause. As per ASME Section 5, SE 797 High temperature materials up to about 540 degrees Celsius 1000 degrees Fahrenheit can be measured with specially designed instruments with high temperature compensation search unit assemblies and couplants the apparent thickness reading obtained from steel walls having elevated temperatures as high too thick by a factor of about 1% per 55 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. For example, if the instrument was standardized on a piece of similar material at 20 degrees Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and if the reading was obtained with a surface temperature of 460 degrees Celsius, 860 degrees Fahrenheit, the apparent reading should be reduced by 8%. External visual inspection An external visual inspection is performed to determine the condition of the outside of the piping, insulation system, painting, and coating systems, and associated hardware, and to check for signs of misalignment, vibration, and leakage.
When corrosion product buildup or other debris is noted at pipe support contact areas, it may be necessary to lift the pipe off such supports for thorough inspection. When lifting piping that is in operation, extra care should be exercised and consultation with an engineer may be necessary. Based on the support type, configuration, screening techniques such as guided wave testing, EMAT, or LAM wave inspections can be used to locate areas of interest for follow-up inspection using more quantitative NDE techniques. Vertical support dummy legs also shall be checked to confirm that they have not filled with water that is causing external corrosion of the pressure piping or internal corrosion of the support leg. Horizontal support dummy legs also shall be checked to determine that slight displacements from horizontal are not causing moisture traps against the external surface of active piping components. Bellows expansion joints should be inspected visually for unusual deformations, misalignment, excessive angular rotation and displacements that may exceed design. Threaded components and other flanged spool pieces that may be easily removed and reinstalled deserve particular attention because of their higher potential for installation of incorrect materials of construction. The periodic external inspection should normally be conducted by the inspector, who also shall be responsible for record keeping and repair inspection. Qualified examiners, operating or maintenance personnel may also conduct external inspections, when acceptable to the inspector. In such cases, the persons conducting external piping inspections, in accordance with API 570 shall be qualified through an appropriate amount of training. Vibrating piping in line movement surveillance Operating personnel should report vibrating or swaying piping to engineering or inspection personnel for assessment. At locations where vibrating piping systems are restrained to resist dynamic pipe stresses, such as at shoes, anchors, guides, struts, dampeners, hangers, periodic MT or PT should be considered to check for the onset of fatigue cracking. Branch connections should receive special attention particularly unbraced small bore piping connected to vibrating pipe. Supplemental inspection other inspections may be scheduled as appropriate or necessary. Examples of such inspections include periodic use of radiography and or thermography to check for fouling or internal plugging. Thermography to check for hot spots in refractory lined systems. Acoustic emission. Acoustic leak detection. And thermography can be used for remote leak detection and surveillance. Supplemental inspection Areas susceptible to localized erosion or erosion corrosion should be inspected using visual inspection internally if possible or by using radiography. Scanning of the areas with UT is also a good technique, and should be used if the line is larger than NPS 12. Review questions Question number 1. Internal visual inspection of NPS 24, DN 600, piping is. Answer is B. Question number 2. Which of these statements are false regarding on stream inspections per API 570? Answer is C. Question number three. After evaluating on stream thickness data, what should the inspector do when the short-term rate changes significantly from the previous identified rate? Answer is B. Question number four. Vertical supports constructed of pipe components should be checked to determine if they are filled with water. 
because water inside a support may cause. Answer is A. Question number 5 Fasteners and other components attached by threads to a piping system should receive special attention during visual inspection, since they have a greater potential for Answer is B. Question number 6. The periodic inspection of piping systems is normally conducted by the inspector. Who may also conduct an external visual inspection? Answer is B. Question number 7. Junctions where vibrating piping systems are restrained are logical places for which specific type of corrosion or cracking. Answer is D. Question number 8. Which of the following techniques is most effective in finding process fouling or plugging in pipes? Answer is B. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile. 